friends, thanks for coming back. I'm so excited for today's tutorial. I mentioned in my last tutorial where I showed you how to make pants and shorts that I wanted to take that pattern and turn it into overalls because I've wanted to make crocheted overalls for so long now and I finally figured out a pattern to do it. It only took me, I believe a day and a half, two days to make these. It was so fun and very, very simple. Beginner can easily do it, but I, I made shorts. Um, I wanted to do long pants, but I was like, eh, it's summer. It might be just nice to have some, some shorts. But if you were to make longer, like a pant, longer pants with these, I would recommend using a lighter weight yarn just so it's not so heavy. But basically what I did was I took the pants and shorts tutorial that I did, which you're going to have to go back and watch if you haven't already. Um, to learn how to make the bottom portion. And then I show you how to make the top part and turn it into overalls. Very simple. It sounds a little more complicated than it is, but it's very, very simple. And I'll explain it all to you in just a couple seconds. And thank you guys so much for all of the love on the shorts and the pants tutorial. You guys seem to really like that. I'm already getting your tags of you guys like already have made stuff with them with that tutorial which is so cool and so fun. I just absolutely love seeing what you guys make. It makes me so happy. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching and for coming back for this tutorial. I hope you absolutely love it. Don't forget to tag me and if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments and I will very much try to get to those. And I hope you love this and I hope you make them because they're so fun and so easy and very 70s vibes and I just, I love them. So I can't wait to see your guys' take on it with like colors and all of that. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so this is where you're gonna go ahead and follow my crochet pants and shorts tutorial. It is the video right before this one. I will also have it pop up at the top right here. But there is only two things that I'm going to do differently in that tutorial for making this into the overalls. Um, so in the tutorial for the waistband, um, in the just for making the shorts, I do nine chains to begin plus one. But for the overalls, I'm doing seven chains in the beginning plus one instead of the nine plus one because we don't need it to be very thick. So I think that the seven plus one was perfect for me. And then for the increasing for the hips, I did only 18 rows in my previous tutorial, but for making it into overalls, I made it 22 rows because I wanted it to be pretty high-waisted. So I did 22 rows, all increasing for the hips. Every single row I increased for 22 rows, whereas in my previous video, I increased for 17 rows and then did one normal row of no increasing. But all of this will make a lot more sense when you go ahead and watch that video. So I will see you when you're done watching that video. And here is what I mean by the 22 rows. I have the waistband like an inch above my belly button because I personally like my overalls a little bit more higher waisted. And now I'm just going to go ahead and add a scalloped border on the bottom legs of the pants. So I'm just added in my navy color. I'm chaining one and in that same stitch I'm going to put a single crochet. And then I'm going to skip a stitch skip that one, go right into the next one with five double crochets. So I'm going to put five double crochets in that same stitch, two, three, four, and five. And then I'm going to skip another stitch, go into the next with a single crochet to make my first scallop. Isn't it so cute? I just love adding a scalloped border. Now I'm going to go ahead and skip the next stitch, go into the next one. After that, with my five double crochets again, right in that same stitch. One more. Then I'm going to skip the next stitch, go into the next one with a single crochet. Then I'm going to skip the next stitch again, go into the next with my five double crochets in the same stitch. And this pattern just completely repeats itself. And here I am on my last double crochet of that scallop, skipping a stitch, going into the next one with a single crochet, skipping a stitch, going into the next with my five double crochets. 
and then I'm going to skip a stitch, go into the next with my single crochet, and this pattern just keeps on going until you run out of room. <laughs> so I'm just now slip stitching into my uh, single crochet, my first single crochet that I made there, and cutting my yarn, pulling out my hook, tightening it just a little bit, and there I have my scalloped border, and I'm just gonna go ahead and repeat that. Um, you can go ahead and repeat that on uh, your other side. I already did both of my sides, but I just think it adds a little something extra. I have to literally restrain myself from adding it to every single project because it's just, I mean, look at it, it's so adorable. <laughs> now we are going to start on the top panels of the overall. So I just tried mine on and put my stitch markers where I think it would look best. And then I measured from the waistband to the top of like my chest bone, just like, it was like around 11, 10, 11 inches. And I thought that was perfect for me, but you go ahead and try it on, see if it works for you. So I'm just laying my piece flat. So the seam is in the middle and just measuring on both sides about two inches ish on both sides. Um, and putting my stitch markers in on both sides of the front and the back, just like two inches in. And I technically should have done this after I, I'm gonna do a single crochet border all around the top of the waistband. And I really wish that I would have done this afterwards because I'm wasting my time doing this right now because I'm gonna completely change it in like a couple minutes. But I am now going to attach my yarn again to the back seam there and I'm just gonna do a single crochet border all the way around the top of the waistband so it's just looks a little bit cleaner and it's easier for me to get my stitches into so I'm just doing the same thing that I did to the bottom of the waistband by putting one single crochet in every available stitch and I did that with the bottom of the waistband as well and I'm just gonna go ahead and now I'm gonna do it to the top just so it looks nice and clean and it's easier to put my stitches into. But you will see in just a second um, why uh, it's just was silly of me to put the, because <laughs> I had to remove them anyway, and then they're totally off where, where I wanted them, but it's okay, it doesn't matter. So I would just say, wait to try them on until you're done with your single crochet border all the way around, and then try them on and put your stitch markers where you think everything would look best. It's just, a lot easier so now I'm just sing slip stitching into the top of my first single crochet that I made and cutting my yarn pulling out my hook and now you can see me trying to redo my the spot where I put my stitch markers so I'm just putting them in two inches in on each side on the front and in the back just as even as possible two inches in on each side and you might need to make yours one and a half inches you might need to make yours uh, thinner it's it totally is dependent on your size your bust measurement and also preference too but I found that two inches was good for me because I ended up adding scallop to the to the outside edges which added more width to the outside so it, it look the two inches was perfect for me and my bust size so you can go ahead and do what works best for you. And to just ensure that it fits your bust measurement, you're going to want to measure this space right here and make sure that that will fit across your bust and be nice and comfortable for you. Now I'm gonna start on my front panel. So I'm going to insert my yarn, attach my yarn right into the space that the stitch marker is in here on the right side of my piece. I'm just gonna attach my yarn and I'm going to tie it just to make sure that it's nice and secure. And then I'm going to reinsert my hook into that same space that I tied my yarn in, and I'm going to chain two. And the chain two does not count as a double crochet. So I'm going to put in that same space that the chain two is in, I'm going to put a double crochet right next to it because that chain two does not count as a double crochet throughout the whole front and back panels. It just won't count as a double crochet. So now in all of the stitches across until I reach my next stitch marker, I'm just putting one double crochet in every single stitch until I get to the next stitch marker on the other side of the front. So I'm just putting one double crochet in every single stitch. And here I have reached my stitch marker, so I'm just gonna pop that out. I don't need it anymore. And I'm just gonna put my final double crochet into that stitch. And there is what we have so far. 
So now I'm going to go ahead and chain two, and then I'm going to turn my work, and remember that the chain two does not count as a double crochet, so in that first stitch that the chain two is in, that one right there, I'm going to put my first double crochet of the row into that stitch. And then just one double crochet in every stitch all the way down until I reach the end of the row. And then I'm just going to put my final double crochet in the top of that previous row's first double crochet. And don't forget that the chain two does not count as a double crochet, so do not put a double crochet into that stitch, otherwise you're just going to be increasing and you don't want to do that. You want it to be nice and straight on both sides. And now I'm just adding my next yarn color, chaining two, turning my work again, and then because that chain two does not count as a double crochet, in that same stitch I'm putting a double crochet into it and then a double crochet all the way down, just one in every stitch until I reach the end of the row. And then I'm just going to put my final double crochet of the row into the top of the previous row's first double crochet, remembering not to put it in the top of the chain two. And then I'm going to chain two, turn my work again, put my first double crochet in that same chain two stitch because it doesn't count as a double crochet. And then again, I'm just going to repeat the exact same process by putting one double crochet in every stitch and this is just repeating itself all the way until you reach the length that you want. And I'm gonna go till about, I'm at about 10 or 11 inches. And I think that's about 22 rows for me, but it might be different for you. It might be more, it might be less. And whatever it is for you, you just keep on going, following the same pattern of one double crochet in every stitch until you get to your final double crochet. And remember not to go into the top of the chain two and then you're going to chain two, turn your work, and then you're going to put your first double crochet into that chain two space because it doesn't count as a double crochet. And then you're gonna put one double crochet in every space and just repeat this until you get to the length that you want. And you're just going to repeat the exact same thing for the back panel as well. And here I have my front and back panels. And as you can see, the edges are not very straight and even. So I'm gonna fix that by adding a single crochet border all the way around the outside uh, edges here. So I'm just going to attach my yarn on the side space right here. You can attach your yarn anywhere you want, but I just attach my yarn here. And I'm going to go ahead and insert my hook, and then I'm going to chain one, and then I'm just going to put a single crochet in the top of these stitches. Now these are easy because they're already single crochets beneath us, so it's easy to put single crochets into those stitches. But then once we get to the side panels, it's just a little bit more tricky to find spaces to put them. But basically you just go in any available stitch that you see with any color that you want and put a single crochet in any available spot on the sides of your panels. The top of the panels are easy as well because we have double crochets, set double crochets to go into, but it's just a little bit trickier to find uh, spaces to go into when you are going on the sides. So we're just gonna go up the sides and then on the top and then down the side and then just follow all the way around till we do the other side as well. So I'm just going up this uh, back panel here with one single crochet in every available stitch that I see. All the way up till we get to the top of this panel. Just one single crochet. Now I've reached the top, so it's a lot easier to get a single crochet in, so I'm just putting one single crochet in these stitches as well. And then I've reached my next side, so I'm putting single crochets in these stitches as well. Just one single crochet. And then I'm getting now to the uh, side spaces here, and I'm just putting a single crochet in those stitches as well. And then we have our next panel we've made it to. So I'm just gonna repeat the exact same thing by going up the side and then across the top and then down the side. And then we will be already reaching the other side where we have, uh, we've, where we've started. So when we reach over there, we're just going to go ahead and slip stitch into the top of the 
a single crochet that we made and then I'm going to chain one and I'm going to do a whole nother row of this of putting one single crochet in every stitch but this row will be a lot easier because we have our our single crochets already made that we're doing right now so it'll be a lot easier to just put one single crochet in every stitch because they're already there so I'm just finishing this up and I've got to my other side like I mentioned and I'm going to go ahead and do that another row of single crochets all the way around just because I think it looks a little bit better to have to have another row it just looks more even and more clean um, also this adds width to your uh, overall so if you're like ah they're a little bit skinny you can go ahead and add another row if you need um, just customize it based on that um, but when I did the two rows of single crochet and then I'm going to add a scalloped border after this so all of that also added width to make it nicely fit my bust so now I'm just slip stitching into the first single crochet, chaining one, and then my yarn is already cut, I already cut it, um, so I'm just going to chain one and then pull out my hook and tighten it. And then I have my single crochet border done. So now we're going to do the straps before we do the scalloped border. So on the far end of the right side of our panel, um, so I'm on the right side right now, so I'm just going to add uh, attach some yarn right here to this spot to the far to the far stitch the farthest stitch on the right side and then I'm going to insert my hook into that same stitch and I'm going to go ahead and chain 80 for the straps you might want to chain more or less whatever you need but for me I chained 80 And when I'm done with this, I'm going to do half double crochets back into the chain all the way back down. So I'm going to skip two stitches from my hook and go into the third with my first half double crochet of this little row here. So I have my first half double crochet and then I'm going to go into the next stitch with my next half double crochet. And then go into the next stitch with my next and then just one half double crochet and every single chain all the way down our chain of 80 or your chain of however many just one half double crochet in every single chain all the way down and that's what it's looking like so far okay so now I've reached my final chain so I'm just doing my final half double crochet and now in that stitch directly next to the stitch that we attached our yarn into, into in the beginning, we are going to slip stitch our strap into that stitch. So just slip stitch there, chain one, cut your yarn, pull out your hook, and there you have your first strap done. So now I'm going to repeat the same thing on the other side, but I'm going to find the far left stitch and attach my yarn in the next stitch over. So I'll explain why in just a second, but I'm going to attach my yarn right in that stitch and chain 80 again. And then after I chain 80, I'm going to do my um, half double crochets back into the chains and I'm going to skip the first two chains, go into the third with my first half double crochet and then a half double crochet all the way down the chains just like we did on the right side, uh, the right strap. And now when I'm done with that, I'm going to do my slip stitch right into that next stitch over, just like that. And doing it this way will make sure that both of the straps are facing the same way. And if you don't care if they're facing the same way, you can just attach it you know, in the farthest one right away, but I just like them both facing the same way. And then just go ahead and repeat the same process on the back side of your panels so you have four straps all together. So just repeat the same thing. And now I'm gonna do the scalloped border all the way around. So I'm just attaching my yarn here right in this middle portion between the straps, and I'm just going to chain one. Skip a stitch go into the next with five double crochets just like we did on the bottom part of our pants so 
So now that my five double crochets are finished, I'm going to skip a stitch, go into the next with a single crochet. Skip a stitch, go into the next with my five double crochets and just repeat this all the way down till I reach the other side, uh, the other strap. So just keep on going with five double crochets in one stitch, skip a stitch, go into the next with a single crochet, skip a stitch, go into the next with your five double crochets, and so on and so forth, just repeating this until we get to our other strap. And then I'm just slip stitching into the final stitch there, chaining one, cutting my yarn, getting all the excess yarn out of the way and then I'm going to pull out my hook and I have the top scalloped border all done oh my gosh it's so cute I love I love scalloped border I mean you can it never misses I mean look at it so now I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing all the way down and around and up just like that and then I already did my other side scalloped border on the top as well so you go ahead and do that. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and do the sides here. So I'm attaching my yarn right on the farthest stitch there, right next to the strap on the left side. And I'm just inserting my hook, chaining one, and doing the exact same thing that I did with the top scallops. And I'm just going to skip a stitch, go into the next with my five double crochets. Skip a stitch go into the next with a single crochet, skip a stitch, go into the next with five double crochets, and just keep on repeating this all the way around until we get to our next strap on the other, on the other side of our overalls panel. And then once you reach the other side, you're just going to slip stitch in the stitch right next to your strap, and then you're going to chain one and cut your yarn. And we have one side done already with our scalloped border. So now we just have to go ahead and do the other side. So basically just repeat the exact same thing that we just, that we just did. And then once I'm done with that, I'm gonna go ahead and weave in all of the ends. And then after all the ends are woven in, I'm going to go ahead and do my waistband tie. So you're going to grab your hook again and make a slip knot. And then I went ahead and made a chain of 220 and I kind of wish that I had done more chains like maybe 260 maybe more just because I like to have that fun dramatic bow in the front and I thought that it would be really cute to have a big one and the 220 was just a little bit small for me so you chain however many you need but I chained 220 and it was a little bit small so you just chain however many that you need and once I was done I just pulled out my hook and um, tightened that end very nicely just to make sure that it was tight and then I left a little bit of a tail so I could um, put it right into the top of my tapestry needle so I had something to sew it into my waistband with so I'm just going back and forth throughout the waistband with my tapestry needle and my waistband tie attached to it just going back and forth through the little ribs of my waistband and just sewing in my tie. And then when I reach the front, I'm just gonna go ahead and remove my, my tapestry needle from the string there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and um, attach some little beads, cause I thought that would be fun, some wooden beads just to the ends, just for something fun, totally optional, you don't have to do it, but I'm just uh, stringing them on and then tying the bottom so they don't fall off. And then I'm just going to go ahead and tie, uh, cut that little tail at the end um, of my chain because I don't need it anymore. So I'm just going to cut it relatively close to the end. And then I'm just going to repeat the same thing with attaching the bead on the other side just so they both are the same. And I really just think it, it's just cute. I don't know. I love adding the little beads to the end. You don't have to, of course, if you don't want to. But I just think it looks so cute. And here's the bow. Again, I really wish that it was bigger, but it's okay. <laughs> no big deal. So if you want it bigger, just make sure to chain more than 220. <laughs> and here are the overalls all finished. I am so in love with the results and I hope you guys are too. And if you have any questions at all, do not hesitate to ask. Thank you guys so much for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you and all of your support. I hope you have the best day. Bye guys.